I'm in the big leagues. Tony don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Ayy, feelin' like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh. Send it too quickly. What is up, football fans, USFL fans, but most importantly, Houston Gamblers fans, welcome to an almost Christmas episode of Gamblers Table Talk. As you can see, I got my beanie on, I got my sweatshirt on, I am all decked out. My wife controls the electric bill, so it is cold in my house. So I'm loving it. I'm feeling the Christmas spirit. And apparently, so was the Gamblers GM, Lionel Vitel, because he went and he gave us a free agent signing. Let's go. This is the first one that we have had since September. And now we finally have a signing. Uh, sticking with the pattern that he's been doing, it's another defensive back. He is truly rebuilding this defensive back core. Uh, we already had one of the best. We have some guys already coming back that have resigned from last season. We have a bunch of new guys that are really exciting. So this is great. Now we signed free agent Tyler Coyle out of Purdue and UConn. So this one is cool, and it really does show where Lionel Vitel is looking for his talent, what he's doing. Follow him on Twitter at CoilEra1 with an underscore in front of it. Uh, I could not find it when I was posting about his signing, so I wanted to make sure that you guys had it. So let's move on. Now, I love that we can see where Lionel Vitel's head is at. Lionel Vitel, he used to be the head of college scouting for the Dallas Cowboys for three years. He then moved on to a higher executive position, and then he retired, and then now he's our GM. So it makes a lot of sense that he brings in Tyler Coyle, who was a part of one of the classes that he specifically brought in for the Cowboys. But let's talk about what he did in college first. Back in college, uh, we assume he's still the same height, weight, and runs the same 40-yard dash, if not faster, we hope. But he runs a 4 4 one He's 209 pounds. He's six foot and a half inch. Uh, he's got good size. He's not the biggest, but he's great. He can play slot. He can play corner. He can play safety. Another pattern that we're seeing with Lionel Vitel signings is that he's really likes the defensive backs that can play a lot of positions. Another thing, if you look at his stats here, the first one that he has is kick return stats throughout his entire career at UConn at uh, Purdue. He was a kick returner. Now, Purdue was a COVID season, so he really didn't get a lot of time there, but they still liked that he was a kick returner. Now, at UConn, he had 35 games returning kicks. He had 287 yards in the one year that he really returned a lot of kicks. So he had 13. Uh, his longest was 35. He averaged 22 yards. He's a good kick returner. He's a fast guy. He runs a 4-4-1. Like, that is incredibly fast. So his in interception statistics, which is interesting that you have defense statistics, but then you also have interception statistics. I don't know. Fix your stuff, UConn. But... How many interceptions did he have while he was there? He had three. Three. So in 2018, I believe that he was used a lot more as a kick returner than he was in the secondary. But uh, what in 2017 and 2019, he really did shine in the defense, especially when you look at it. He had 161 solo tackles, 99 assists. Um, he had seven and a half tackles per yard. I mean, he's all over the field. I really like that he is very good in the slot, which you can see when you look at him in the Cowboys training camp. Now, here's a video. Let me see if I can get it to play. There you go. Uh, it's a huge hit that he had in the Cowboys training camp. He went viral for him on D Dallas Cowboys Twitter. So in this, he was playing, I want to say, a uh, strong safety position. He was kind of moving up, covering the middle zone and watching the flats. And when they threw it out to the running back, he came up and he hit the guy hard. Now, should he have when I... They're like not probably not going full speed, but I don't know. But he rocks this dude's world. He wore number 31, looks sweet. He was in Dallas Cowboys camp. Lionel Vitell knows him very, very well. So it's really exciting. He adds great depth. Uh, he's a very NFL fringe guy. So that's a big thing that Lionel also is looking for. When I talked to him about the first two signings he had, he raved about how if one of them, if he didn't have an injury, he would be in the NFL right now. He would have been a draft pick and the other guy because of he he finished at an hbcu at a smaller school he didn't get the looks that he should have he is also nfl talent so this one verified nfl talent he literally has spent all of his time in the cowboys camp and the cowboys practice squad so he is one of those guys that he just needs some good full full speed game film maybe more than a quarter in preseason where he can show that he really is a guy who can move up so very very excited we finally got another signing 
Uh, we've been waiting. The last two were Kenji Bahara and Montel Kozart back in September, which has been forever. So the fact that we have new signings is just awesome and very, very exciting. It is the season of giving, and we have been given a gift with this Tyler Coyle signing. So very excited about that. But moving on to just some pop culture, some fun stuff. Who watched Monday Night Football this past week? So if you watched it, you 100% saw Danny DeVito, Danny Cutlets, if you watched the uh, Manning cast, went out and he put down the Green Bay Packers. Let's go, dude. If you're a Cowboys fan, you should hate the Packers. I'm a Vikings fan. I despise the Packers. So watching Danny Cutlets go down the field was awesome. But the bigger story other than that was his agent. I don't even remember what they kept calling him. They just kept saying Danny, Danny DeVito's agent. And, dude, this guy is hilarious. He shows up. He looks like a mob boss, like he's a hitman for a mob. Uh, he's ridiculous. They keep showing him with DeVito's dad in the stands, kissing him on the cheek, all this stuff. Peyton Manning would not stop talking about him. So in the middle of the game, if you look over here, you see Mark Thompson tweeted. Oh, sorry. I keep saying Danny DeVito. Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito's agent is my agent. Let that sink in. Now, I'm sure a lot of people were like, nah, a couple of people said, yeah, that's awesome. And me personally, I was sitting there. I was like, I don't know if that's true. I mean, maybe. But then he goes, and if you look at this post over here, he says, had to go to the archives for this one. And I blew it up big right here. He has a photo with, I believe his name, Sean Stiletto, which, or Stilato, which is a very, very Italian name. He fits the mold all too well. So yeah, it was actually his agent. I don't know if he still is because that's definitely him back in Florida. So who knows? And Mark has a lot more hair now. So I don't know, but at one point, Sean Stilato was Mark Thompson's uh, agent, and I just think that's hilarious. You know, it's a colli collision of two worlds, you know, my world with the Houston Gamblers and watching Monday Night Football, and then, boom, Mark Thompson. It's always, if you're not following Mark Thompson at this point and you watch my show, what are you doing? Go follow Mark Thompson at In Mark We Trust on Twitter, on Instagram. He's just so off the cuff and wild. You got to go watch this guy. But moving on. Merger. Everybody wants to talk to about, about the merger. Everybody asks about the mergers. I have players come in and ask me about the merger, and I'm not going to lie to them. I tell them I'm not sure. At this point, it looks like the gamblers might be safe. Awesome. That's great, but we don't know for sure, and I'm not going to tell you that we are 100% safe. I'm going to say it's they're saying that a Houston team will survive. They're saying that the Houston players will at least get to be in the Houston camp. Do I know if that's true? I don't know. The players did sign a union. So if the, I believe the new, new players who are signing also have to sign the ratified union agreement. So I'm not sure right now. All we know, the season starts March 28th, 20th. The season starts in March. We know that we know that they signed that they will merge. We don't know anything yet, but hope on the horizon. December 21st is hundred days to kickoff. Now, if you follow UFM last year, when we were still USFL network, we did a hundred day countdown until season two started, which was crazy. I did a hundred graphics. Uh, I tried to get ahead of them. Every day we released a graphic for how many days there was until USF kickoff. So if you think that we should do that again, if you follow me on Twitter, or Instagram, and you say, Hey, I would love to see a hundred day countdown graphic. Maybe it's UFL, uh, countdown maybe it's houston gamblers countdown um let me know man i'll be down to put something together and see what we can do it's a lot of work but it's fun and if people like it then i'm into it so but 100 days till kickoff we're hoping that that means we'll hear something if we go much further than 100 days to kickoff and we haven't heard anything which means the players haven't heard anything that's a bad sign so we're really really hoping this is kind of our cutoff day as fans where we're like man we really 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 hope that we hear something so We'll see. But that's honestly all we have right now. Uh, if As soon as I hear anything about the merger, you know I'm going to hit you up. You know I'm going to come on this show. I'm going to blast it out to the world, and I'm going to let everybody know what's going on because I've been wanting to know what's going on. So make sure that you subscribe to UFM, United Football Media, on YouTube. You go follow me. Go follow all of us on Instagram and Twitter. We're going to keep you up to date minute by minute, man. That's the fastest way to do it. You can subscribe here and you can get the like little minute details when we really, really dive into it. But if you want to hear it like the minute it happens, you got to go follow us on social media. So make sure you do that. But until then, man, this has been Gambler's Table Talk, season three, episode 10. We're already 10 episodes into the third season of the show, which is crazy. But I'm 
I'm loving it, man. I love coming and talking to you guys. Make sure you hit the comments. Let me know what you think. I always comment back. I love hearing comments, you know, criticisms, but not too mean. Just let me know. All right. But until next time, let's go. All in. I'm in the big leagues. Totally don't miss me. Balling like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney.